Hey guys, Asia Kyle here today, and we're going to do a very, or we'll try and keep it brief, but a quick video as far as why I'm switching away from a striker fired platform to a hammer fired double single action. Um, if you watch anything on YouTube and, and you're in the uh, firearm community at all, you probably know of Lucky Gunner. And Chris Baker with Lucky Gunner, who is currently the face of their videos, he also has switched over from a striker fired to a hammer fire double single action. Uh, same with Tim from the Military Arms channel and I know the Yankee Marshall somewhere in his chain went from striker to something hammer fired with his revolvers but he went through the chain of striker uh, fire to double single action, hammer fire to revolver. Point being, um, and you can watch all their videos on their progression of why, uh, especially Lucky Gunner, he really goes into why this and why that and how to do this and how to do that but we all made this transition and for me personally the biggest reason why is how I carry, which is appendix carry. I'm a very thin guy, as some of you have probably seen on my videos, and it's hard for me to carry in the 3, 30, 4 o'clock position because this little area right there sticks out, whether it be on you know this CZ or you know this uh, subcompact or even the Glock 43, that little corner likes to stick out, and I'm a thin person. That's just the way it is, so I found that appendix carry is better for me. Anytime we do an activity, there's always a certain risk, uh, whether it be that we're driving or we're going to ride our bike to work or, you know, if we decide to go rock climbing, skydiving, or in this case, even uh, carrying a firearm for personal protection. There's always a risk factor involved. And what it boils down to is how much risk are we willing to take? Are we willing to take out of 100%? Are we willing to take a 50% risk on something? Um, skydiving, for example, the risk re reward um, conundrum is quite great. The risk is very high, um, but the what if is pretty low. But if the what if does happen, the risk now exponentially jumps to, you know, this is going to be very bad for you. Um, and with that, with appendix carry, for example, you take on a certain amount of risk, and that is depending on, you know, the platform of choice here, whether it be, you know, this double single action or striker fire. And in my opinion, when you decide to appendix carry, we're already taking a risk. Um, there's a lot of arteries below our waistline that would cause one to bleed out um, within minutes uh, just by choosing to do that. <coughs> um, excuse me. But that can be greatly negated by choosing to not carry a striker fired weapon. Um, switching over to the double single action and frankly that's why a lot of people do this um, secondly no matter who you really talk to a vast majority of striker fired guns uh, plainly and simply have sucky triggers there's no way around it and if you try and, and, and defend that you know the Glock trigger is fantastic well fine my biggest argument to that is go fire a SIG P320 Oh, well, you still want, okay, well then go fire a Walther PPQ. You know what? The uh, P320, the PPQ, and the BP9 all have excellent striker fire triggers. However, they still are really sucky in comparison to just about anything single action. Um, why there's a lot of mechanics on as to why a single action trigger can be better. It's a lot shorter of a take up and a lot shorter of a break, um, but I digress. The, the triggers ultimately on striker fire guns suck. Um, even this XD Mod 2 in comparison to the P07, which this still has a very nice trigger. It is just, it's not as good as the single action, especially in this uh, CZP07. Uh, the double action now is going to be where a little bit of the striker fire trigger does kind of take the cake a little bit. Learning a double action trigger can be very difficult. It's it's different. You have to learn now learn two separate trigger pulls. Um, but I grew up shooting a Ruger P95 um, or the P90. I, I can't remember which one. But it too is a double single action firearm. And it's a very smooth double action. And this one will continue to smooth out over time as I continue to use the CZP07. Once you get past that, you have a very excellent trigger. Uh, and even then, you still have an excellent you know, double action trigger. Take a look at car arms. All of their stuff is only exclusively double action. So it still makes a very, very good trigger. Um, you just have to learn a little bit more. So first, the safety, or safety factor. There's a lot of risk in appendix carrying, and you negate that risk by going with a double single action firearm. Uh, secondly, 
Uh, striker fire guns have crappy triggers. It, they, they just do. And if you really still don't believe me, please go to a range and rent something double single action. Uh, you will find that you'll probably shoot a lot better um, than your, you know, tricked out Glock even. Um, you know, with that also, well, let's talk thirdly, reliability. The H&K uh, USP is, from what I'm reading and watching and listening to people, is probably, if not the most heavily tested handgun in military history, within recent history, that is, within the last, say, 100 years. Um, and it just kept going and going and going and going. Well, why is that? Let's take a look, very quick look at physics here. Inside a striker-fired weapon, oh, I'm actually going to grab a pen. Inside your striker-fired weapon, you have your striker channel, and in this channel, it contains a very small spring. Um, and essentially, what happens is, you know, the spring is under tension. As you pull your trigger, you are cocking the rest of the spring, and then you hit the break, and it releases the spring. Well, in terms of overall travel, it's very, very short. So, if something happens to clog up this channel, as we see in the gauntlet testing done by military arms, your gun now becomes useless, and there's nothing you can do about it. Let's compare that over to a hammer fire double single action. The length of travel to engage the striker on the inside of this is done by the hammer. Well, the hammer has to f come from you know resting position here um, or, or here even, but it has to come back to this point and then fall forward, which therefore strikes that uh, striker and therefore ignites the powder primer um, and so on and so forth. The gun goes off. When the military arms channel did his review of the VP9 and he did some of the gauntlet testing on it, um, and it failed after water, he got a hold, or at least so he says, he got a hold of H&K and they said that they don't test their striker fired weapons like they do their hammer fired ones. Why? Because their hammer fired ones are typically done for the military, thus they have higher testing. Um, if if we just you know for a moment say okay fine I believe that at face value, hammer fired guns according to H&K are far superior. They're far more reliable, um, therefore they go off more times than not. Um, if you watch a whole bunch of other guys, I, what is his name, uh, Vigilant, uh, Spectre, or whoever, the VSO channel, when they do their testing with anything hammer fired versus striker fired, even with them, and they abuse the crap out of those, it seems that the hammer fired guns work a lot better than the striker fired ones, and a lot of that is due to mechanics and physics, so... Um, that's just the way it is. I mean, you know, if we take a look at this and the gun is hot, I'm not going to clear it, but I am going to keep it in a, you know, safe direction. You know, here at this point in time, if we were to pull the trigger, the hammer has to still come all the way back and has to fall all the way forward. But even, you know, when we switch over to single action, which, oh no, be careful, it's very dangerous right now. Well, it's only dangerous to put your finger in the trigger guard, so settle down, safety Nazi, you'll be okay. Um, go cry about it later. But even then, you know what, we still do have a quite a long ways for the hammer to fall. Um, back to the safety, once it's in single action, fine, I'm done shooting, decock, done. And again, we'll take great care to put the pin behind the trigger and set it back down. You know, just from a reliability standpoint, it does really seem that the hammer fired guns do a lot better job um, of being more reliable over the striker fired. So as a brief recap, what do we have again so far? We have first and foremost is going to be um, the safety um, for appendix carry. It's, it's a lot safer to carry a double single action weapon uh, because the longer first trigger pull, um, whether you're carrying an appendix even or if you have small children around, whatever it is, it's very heavy for that first pull and therefore makes it a little safer to carry. Uh, in my own opinion, and as well as Tim with the Military Arms Channel. Uh, secondly, you have a better trigger in both in both stages, if you ask me. You have a better double action pull, uh, albeit heavier and longer, but it's still very smooth. Um, but you have a very crisp, very sweet single action pull. Um, and striker fired guns have crappy triggers. They are spongy, and frankly, they suck. Uh, thirdly is going to be the reliability of both the weapon platforms and I understand that some of you are like well Glocks are super super reliable and you know I don't doubt that um, they, they're very very sealed uh, even this uh, Springfield over here has you know it's very sealed as well it does have just a little bit of more of an opening in the back for crap to get into uh, and I think that's probably where the uh, VP9 failed a little bit myself is it does have a you know a striker indicator behind it but 
you know, it's still being very sealed. Hammer fired guns in all the testing that people have done and all the videos that we've probably all seen, it seems that hammer fired guns do a better job. Why? Because mechan mechanics and physics with that. The hammer falls and therefore it's got more force striking against it um, to ignite the primer. So ultimately here's what it comes down to. In today's age, a lot of people think that anything hammer fired is obsolete and needs to go by the wayside. However, I would greatly disagree with that. Um, I think hammer fired guns are still extremely prevalent today. My preference is more towards a double single action hammer fired gun versus a double action only revolver, um, which we'll get into that probably on a different topic and different video entirely. But um, point still being hammer fired guns are very, very prevalent today. Um, a lot of police forces are still using um, hammer fired weapons. I know uh, over here that they have only now very recently finally switched over to having all of their weapons be striker fired. Um, but that's just because they're easier to learn, which is a, you know, a serious plus going towards a striker fired gun. It's one trigger pull and that's it. Um, but still, hammer fired guns are very prevalent today. Uh, and if you still don't believe me, you should watch Lucky Gunner's string of videos about hammer fired um, double single action. And uh, Chris Baker does talk a little bit about Ernest Langdon and how fast he is and, and winning um, um, USPSA and championships on a hammer fired double single action gun um, over anybody else with a striker fired one. So I understand this is probably going to be an extremely disliked video that I'm probably going to hurt a lot of your feelings. Um, with your uh, with your Glocks and stuff like that and by all means that's just too bad uh, if you still don't believe me please go and, and rent one at your uh, local range and, and test it out see how much better the single action trigger is over your Glock trigger um, a lot of polymer striker fired wonders are just in my opinion extremely overrated uh, especially whenever we've got a lot of very awesome hammer fired uh, platforms out there that do a fantastic job have better triggers and the works on it so uh, anyways guys um, please like and subscribe this video if you did enjoy it um, I understand the comment section is probably gonna be riddled with uh, with a bunch of hate but uh, please leave comments um, if you agree with me fantastic I'd love to hear it. if you disagree with me uh, you know tell me why um, tell me why I'm, I'm wrong in this uh, I don't believe you and you probably won't convince me otherwise but for the foreseeable future, I'm going to go ahead and stick with anything hammer fired. I will probably still carry on occasion um, this uh, subcompact XD Mod 2. Uh, it is a smaller gun, physically speaking, um, and I really hope one day they'll bring out some hammer fired single stack options to therefore compete directly against some of the other single stack uh, striker fired platforms out there. So, anyway, guys, this is Agent Kyle signing off, uh, just talking a little bit why I switched from double single action, or excuse me, why I switched from striker fired platforms over to the double single action firearms.